In this lesson, I will show you how to use the mod function, which is to calculate a mod or a modulus from a specific division. So basically what a modulus is, it would be the remainder of the division has been performed. It might sound like something boring, but it might be something useful if you need to calculate a value of doing something every certain amount of of times. So we'll get that, we'll get to, to that um, in this little bottom table that I've created here. But basically, if we have to divide our numbers here, 11 divided by 6, how many times can 11 be divided by 6 and what is left is what it, it would calculate. Now I've got a couple of extra things here. Um, I've got the normal function that Excel provides, which is just our mod function. I will do a formula to show you how to calculate a, a, a modulus without using the function. And then just the steps of how a modulus is calculated. So let's start with just the function itself. So to perform the mod function, I will just say equals mod mod <clears throat> open our brackets this is our number and the divisor what are we dividing it by is six so that shows you that 11 divided by six is mod five it means that there is five remaining so let's explain this a bit more. Let me do the next one. Equals mod, open brackets, 19, semicolon, our divisor is 3, we close the bracket. And the remainder of 19 divided by 3 is 1. So what is the full integer solid number that's left? The difference between this and the result of dividing it by that. So let's break it down into steps. And then I'll also show you how to do a formula on it. And then we'll carry on with the rest. Yeah. So first action would be to divide. That's the first step in calculating a modulus. So we'll say equals 11 divide by 6 simple as that. So that would be a little formula. We're building a formula here, but in four steps to get the same answer, and then we'll do it in one formula. So 11 divided by 6 is 1.833333. So basically 11 can be divided by 6 1.83 times, but if we work with full numbers only, it can only be divided by 6 once. And then what is left is what the mod is. Now, in the previous two, two previous lessons, we had the floor function and we had the int function. You can use either or to get rid of the decimals because we want to get rid of the decimals. In mod, we don't work with decimals. I'll do the floor function on this one and then I'll do the int function, which is a better function to use in this case if you were to but I'll do the floor in in this one it would give us the same result so we'll say equals floor I'll just do the normal floor one we don't they both do the same and um, this is our number and we want to I'll, I'll multiply yeah we want to take it to a multiple of one, full number one. Close our brackets, so it shows us that one, so basically just discarding all the decimals. Why did I use the floor and not the M round or ceiling? Because M round would have rounded it to the closest one, which would have been two, and ceiling would have done the same thing. Now, the next step is to multiply. So what we want to do here is first divide 
then we remove the, the decimal numbers and then we need to multiply 1 or our result here by our divisor so let's do this so we'll say 1 or the cell here times by our divisor that gives us 6 then to get the actual modulus we need to subtract the answer from our multiplication from our original number so we'll say equals the number minus the answer from the multiplication and that gives us a modulus a mod of 5 now let's do the next one only difference is I'll use the int function here so we'll say equals our number divided by 3 because that's what we're dividing with so that gives us 6.3333 now we want to lose all the decimals so we'll use the int in this case which is a bit quicker int what do we want to convert into an integer is that one close the brackets and you'll see 60 so with the floor firstly it's more letters to type and you have to tell it way to round it to, to the closest one or half or whatever the int in this case would be better because it just automatically gets rid of all the decimals now we need to multiply like we multiplied here so we'll use our integer that's left multiply by our divisor right so that leaves us with that gives us an answer of 18 so 3 times 6 would give us 18 our original number was 19 so what is left let's see 19 minus 18 would give us 1 which is our modulus so that is the steps on how to calculate a modulus I will leave the formula for now but we will get to to that and then I'll show you the main difference between formulas and functions now let's do the the next one I've just made all the div divisors the same so to do mod here mod open bracket 12 and our divisor is 17 in a case where your number is lower than your divisor your mod will always still be your original number as you can see there it stays 12 I'm going to just drag these ones down so 1977 divided by 17 gives you a mod 5 49552 divided by 17 gives you a mod 14 you will also notice that your mod will never be higher or equal to your divisor because if the answer was the mod was 17 then it could have just been divided one more time and then there's no purpose of this let's do these ones again the whole step so we'll say equals 12 divided by 17 now that gives us 0 0.705 and this is why our original number would stay the same let's carry on here we'll say int and we get our number and it now gives us 0 so we know that if we're going to multiply 17 by 0 it would give us 0 again but let's do it anyway 17 times is 0 or c6 times j6 gives us 0 and now we subtract our original number from the answer from our multiplication and that is why it stays the same so any number lower than your divisor will yield the same mod as your original number 
again I'm just going to drag these ones down and as you can see there your mod comes to 5 your mod comes to 14 so if we were to mod is something that you might have used somewhere during your educational career somewhere in math you would have had to work out mods Excel makes it a bit easier we can do it with a couple of cells or we can do it with a formula that I'm going to show you now or Excel provides us with certain functions to make everything a lot easier so basically this little short function performs the same as doing all these steps here and it would also do the same as doing the formula now to do the formula is a little bit trickier but still quicker than this so the first thing we need to do our purpose is to minus our multiplication from our original number so that would be the the main step we need to work out the, <clears throat> the multiplication answer and minus that from our number so we're going to start with our number and we're going to minus <clears throat> now we're going to do our formula so what do we want to minus from our original number we want to minus the integer that we get as a result of our number divided by our divisor that concludes that part so that part there would yield the one times by our divisor as you can see this is all still in brackets so everything in brackets would be worked out as one answer and close our bracket so let's just check have we covered everything we've got our number that we are subtracting from we've got our integer result which includes that because there's our divisor and we've got our multiplication so different steps but let's hit enter and see what our answer is and as you can see there it's five so let's drag that down and now to copy the formula we can just say right click we highlight these cells here and we say paste formula and as you can see 12 12 5 5 14 14 so calculating step by step quicker than working it out with pen and paper and calculator or with even without a calculator but still more work than using a formula formula quick but we need to make sure that we do it the right way we need to make sure our brackets are applied that the right calculations are done and therefore a function created by excel is there for the specific reason of making this and this a lot easier so <coughs> let's look at a clock 12 hours this is a form of modulus so basically we'll see I'm just going to do the result here and then you will see why I say this is a form of a modulus because every 12th time it does something so we'll have one semicolon our divisor which is 12 close now like I explained here every number lower than the divisor will always be the number as you can see there one so now let me drag all the way down to 12 and leave it there so 2 will stay 2, 3 will stay 3, etc, etc. Then when we get to 12, it changes it to 0. So this is where every 12th time. So you perform a range, and at the 12th time, when your numbers are equal to each other, it wraps it back to 0 again, and then it would start again. So if you're running in a sequence, specific sequence like we are here, 13 would in fact be 1. 13 on the time, 1300 hours, 
which is 1 p.m. It's 1. So I'm just going to quickly, let me just show you a quick way to copy a whole lot of formulas together. Just select the one row of, not the whole row, just the cells you want to copy. Copy that and let's paste the formulas there. Okay, so a whole lot of things here. All of these comes to zeros, but at the end of the day it gives us the exact same modulus. And 12 gives us a modulus of zero. So why is that? Because 12 divided by 12 can be divided by 12 once. And what is left? There's nothing left. So that's why the modulus of a number divided by the same number is zero. Now let's copy this formula down all the way to 24. And as you can see, it starts again. 1, 2, 3, all the way. 24 is also equal to zero. So every number that can be divided by a number, in this case, every number that can be divided by 12 or is a multiple of 12. Let me rather say that every number that's a multiple of 12 will always yield a zero as a modulus. If I were to change this to 48, it would be zero. If I were to change it to 96, it would be zero. If I were to change it to 144, it would be zero which means if I were to change it to 145, it should be one, because then it starts the sequence again, as you can see there. So let's use time. I'm gonna just, you can also just select the whole range and drag it down like that. Everything there is the same, everything there is the same. Now I'm going to use time, but in this case 24 hours because we're working on a 24 hour clock. Let's do this in international time. So if we were to divide 48 by 24, our mod would be zero, same as in this case, but that's not what we're trying to calculate. Let's say the time is 3 p.m. or 1500 hours in this case, 3 p.m. 1500 hours, what would the time be 48 hours from this time? So if we just use normal time functions, we can simply just say 1500 hours plus 48 hours, it would still be three o'clock because 48 is a multiple of 24. If we were to change that to 49 hours, time should be four o'clock or 1600 hours. So let's do the same with mod. So equals mod number divisor. That would only give us the mod of those two, but we add 15 in this case, because that is the current time that we are trying to calculate what would the time be. And you can see it is 15. So if we were to change 48 hours, so 1500 or three o'clock, what would it would I would what would the time be 49 hours from then? The time would be 1600 or four o'clock. If the time was two o'clock, it should go up to three o'clock. What would the time be? Let's change this to two o'clock as well. And I'm just going to remove this one. I will do it here. Okay, so what would the time be if it is two o'clock? What would the time be? 791 hours from then, from two o'clock. Time would be one o'clock, 2500 hours, 791, one o'clock. Sorry, it's doing that because there's not enough space here. So the time would be 
one o'clock. So now why when I said here that the modulus can never be higher than the divisor that it give me a number here simply because we added two. So if we were to remove that two the answer would actually be 23 which is the maximum number this modulus could have been. So just my luck that I chose that specific number. Let's just change it to 761 to 1900 or 7 p.m. 761 1900. So that was a, a little mistake I did not plan, but just to, to, to basically show you how it would work if you were to, to calculate using modulus. And that basically explains what a modulus is, how you step-by-step -step calculate a modulus, how you do it with a formula, and how the mod function is used to simplify all of that. Thank you so much, and I will see you in the next lesson.